evening is his brother, Brian Kelly. Well, first, I'm honored that my brother Frank asked me to be his induct, uh, introduce him or whatever it is. <laughs> but um, so when he asked me, I told my wife, I said, you know, Frank called and he asked me to introduce him with this Hall of Fame thing. And she's like, are you serious? Like, he had, why did he ask you? And then I started thinking, like, I don't know why he asked, like, me. So I first thought, like, he would probably ask his wife or his four kids, Frankie, you know, Steven, Jackie, or JK. And then I started thinking, like, that would show favoritism. If he picks one, it might hurt somebody's feelings. And then I'm starting to think about his Cornell crew and uh, all his buddies, and I've got to know his Cornell guys. And um, don't be delusioned by the Ivy League title. They're not that bright, all right? So uh, I don't think they could do 100 words. And it's not just the Cornell thing. Even the Princeton guys in the room, I haven't been around yet. No. Um, then I thought he would ask my dad. And then my dad, there's no way he could do my dad because he would be bawling the whole time and crying. And so, and then his speech would be about 15 to 20 minutes to introduce him. Then I thought my brother John, my brother John's an Irish twin. They're 12 months apart. Siblings, John would like kind of stick it to him. So he asked him. Then my brother David, and I don't know if you've ever met my brother David, but he's really, really funny. And uh, Frank, he would show Frank up, so Frank was like, there's no way I'm going to ask my brother David. So I said, you know what? He asked me because I'm his little brother. And Frank, this is not an exaggeration, I'm the youngest. We're very different. Frank's a lot driver, intense. He's called me 11 times to remind me about tonight's event. So the first call was... Uh, Hey, Bri, you know, would you do me? I'm like, introduce me. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'd be great. I'm honored. He calls me three days later. He's like, you remember, I, I need you to introduce me. I'm like, I, I got it. I got it. He goes, you got to do a speech. It's 100 words. I'm like, I'm not going to write 100 words. I'm dyslexic. It's not going to happen. <laughs> but, you know, I'll, I'll freelance it and I'll roll with it. So is it that, and then literally then he calls. He goes, uh, you know, you got to submit your 100 words. I'm like, I'm not submitting 100 words. So... Then he calls me today, no exact, texts me, calls me, says, hey, do you know tonight is the banquet? I'm like, I got it. So that's how it rolls in our family. Once you're the baby of four, you're always the baby of four. I'm almost 50, and I'm still the baby. So, yeah. So when Frank, um, I asked him, I go, what are you going in as? You going in as a player? You going in as a contributor? I didn't know. I, I know Frank. I'll brag about him. He could go in either way. He was a great player. He's an awesome face-off guy. I love playing with him in MLC. Um, and obviously, I read it tonight that he's going in as a contributor. Um, so. It's good. Um, real quick. If you ever met my brother Frank, Frank's a worker. He's got a great work ethic. He was a great role model for me as the youngest. I really looked up to him. I idolized him as, as a little boy, watching him play at Calvert Hall and then going on to Cornell. But Frank was a worker. He did everything he did, he worked hard at it, from sports to FCA or whatever. Frank has a level of intensity and compassion. It's a great combination. If you can have intensity with and compassion, it, it works. And Frank is a doer. He gets things done. Frank's always prepared. If you ever needed him to do something, it will happen. He is a doer. He's not a man of without action. He, if he says it, it's going to happen. Same thing of how he had the vision with FCA and how he was as a player and how he was as a coach. Frank's competitive. The beauty of Frank as a competitor, he never compromised his integrity to win a game. He never compromised his integrity to do something with excellence. He always did it the right way. And Frank also cares about people. And that's what he did in, in, in what he does with lacrosse. He uses lacrosse as a platform. He uses lacrosse as a ministry. And like the great John Wooden said, a good coach can win a game. A great coach can change a life. As Frank is not being here as a coach, he's being here as someone who is a contributor and giving back to this community. And I'm so proud of my brother because what he has done with lacrosse, he's used it to change many many 
lives, not just with FCA, but inner city to Uganda, across the country with U.S. Lacrosse. Frank, you're so well deserving. Very proud of you. Congratulations. Thanks, Brian. Uh, that was great. I really appreciate you being my presenter. Uh, you know, Brian's the head coach at Calvert Hall, and this past year was named the USA Today National High School Coach of the Year, and that's incredible. <laughs> He's coached two of our three sons, a bunch of my nephews, and I'm, I'm really grateful he, uh, he did it. And all I did really text him today is, brother, I really appreciate you presenting me tonight. But I, that, was a, that was a little reminder, too, you know. <laughs> anyway, I was actually hoping to maybe use some of Gary Seibel's 500 words since he wasn't able to be here tonight. Um, <laughs> But I think uh, all of his words have been used up and or will be used up soon. So I plan to be brief, and I've written my speech to make sure I accomplish that goal. If I were to title my speech, I would call it Influence. I'm so thankful for the influence of lacrosse on me and my family. My brother John, the pioneer in our family, was the first to play this weird game in the 70s and planted the seed for me and my brothers to possibly switch from baseball. When I went to Calvert Hall on a small football scholarship, lacrosse was the last thing on my mind, but Coach Mike Thomas convinced me and a number of football players to play lacrosse instead of baseball. That was influence. My first coach was Tom Keegler, the great Hall of Fame defenseman from WNL and former USA team member who went home to be with the Lord this past October. Tom's wife, Barbara, and Bo are here tonight in the back. Raise your hands. For which I am just so grateful. Thank you, Barb. Thank you, Bo. I got the blessing of coaching Bo. I wanted to return the favor. And I just can't thank you enough for being here. And Coach Keegler um, decided, for some reason, to keep me on his Calvert Hall JV team my freshman year, even though I couldn't catch or throw. I'd never played but I could run and hit, and he actually made me believe I could possibly play this game. That was huge influence. I wouldn't be here without Tom Keegler. I was fortunate to play three years of varsity lacrosse with Coach Thomas and get re uh, recruited to play in college. I decided on Cornell and Coach Richie Moran because he convinced me I could still play football, which was my passion at the time, and be a Division I lacrosse player. Every day at Cornell started with his famous whistle. <laughs> Let's hear it, Coach. You got it. <laughs> to this day, I never have, never will. I don't use a real whistle. Hundreds of games, hundreds of players, thousands of practices, no whistle. And I've got my fingers, too. And each practice at Cornell began with his bold statement, it's great to be here. Um, it's actually the title of his new book. What a challenge and joy to play for this Hall of Fame coach and program. Thank you, Coach Moran, so much for being here, flying down yesterday and being here all the way from sunny Ithaca, New York. And thank you for your great influence in my life. I can't thank you enough. At Cornell, uh, through some frustrating injuries and humbling playing time situations, thanks, Coach, um, my faith became personal, real, and life-changing. My sophomore year, the light went on, and my eyes and ears and heart and mind were finally opened. And in the middle of lacrosse practice one day on Shokoff Field, I received the greatest gift of all time, in my opinion, and that was my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, it's a long story, but my life has not been the same since, and that was influence. After Cornell, when I returned to Baltimore, I thought my lacrosse career was over. I didn't grow up playing, so I never heard a club. I knew nothing. Um, when I was fortunate to get a call from this guy named Arlie Marshall, who Chick referenced earlier, to come and play for Maryland Lacrosse Club. Those were seven of my favorite years of lacrosse, playing with many of the greatest players in the world at the time, like Chick and Greeny, who are here tonight, and many others who were in this Hall of Fame. And I was fortunate to play on a couple national championship teams, including one with my brothers uh, Brian, who is here, my brother David, Eugene, the love machine, the scoring machine, Kelly. Um, and, and that was really special. You know, it's neat. We have, I have four brother, three brothers like Chick. And it was fun to play several years and win a championship with the Baltimore Thunder Pro in Indoor team as well. And I, I think you'll agree with this. One thing I've learned from playing and coaching lacrosse is that winning is much more fun than losing. Can I have an amen? <laughs> <laughs>
Anyway, in 1987, I was invited to help coach and begin to influence others at Calvert Hall and have been fortunate to help coach at LTRC, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, FCA, and boys of all ages ever since. One of my favorite accomplishments has been to see many of the Calvert Hall face-off men I coached get college scholarships. And one of my favorite things to hear around town is, hey, Coach Frank, or some of my current 2022, that's eighth grader FCA players are actually out in California right now playing in the Sandstorm tournament. I was supposed to be with them, and this great honor came along. But as they call me, Mr. Coach Frank, um, and our son JK, uh, who's an eighth grader, chose to be here tonight with me and us instead of with his teammates in sunny 80 degree California. So thanks, JK. I really appreciate you being here. Um, I'm so thankful uh, for the last 30 years of involvement with FCA and FCA Lacrosse, which are committed to helping coaches and athletes fulfill their God-given potential. Going back to our first lacrosse camp in 1988 with only nine campers, our first team in 1992, uh, some dubbed it the Miracle in the Mountains team, which was the only time I played on the same team with all three of my brothers, John, David, and Brian. And our dad was there to see it, which was awesome. You know, the one word definition of FCA is influence. And I just can't even explain the influence it's had on our family's life. And it's been very rewarding to volunteer with U.S. Lacrosse, working with Steve Stenerson, who Chick again referenced, all he's done for the game is beyond words, Susie Chase and others to help with the campaign to build a new U.S. Lacrosse Headquarters Hall of Fame and U.S. National Teams Training Center. It's beautiful if you haven't been there, but hopefully soon it will be the U.S. Olympic Teams Training Center. That's our goal. Um, you know, and it's been a real joy to be connected to Uganda Lacrosse and now working with the Federation of Inter national lacrosse and like everyone in this room I and we hope to see lacrosse become an Olympic sport and soon and I know I want to do whatever I can do to help and just imagine when it becomes an Olympic a sport influence major influence one of the great light great and I'm coming down the home stretch here one of the greatest <laughs> highlights of all for me has been coaching and watching our sons Frankie Stephen, and JK and our daughter Jackie um, who only played a couple of years but was a pretty good goalie coach Megan Huter's going, to be, um, Huter's going to be honored later, coached her a little bit. And to see my nephews play and, and them even win a number of championships themselves at LTRC, FCA, Calvert Hall, and North Carolina. I and my family, who are all here tonight, have been so blessed and influenced by the game of lacrosse. I just hope in, that we, I and we, get to continue to bless and influence others for many years to come. Um, in closing, I thank God for connecting me to this great game. So many great people and for this amazing honor. Um, I thank my wife, Gail. We actually had our wedding reception in this very room 30 years ago this year. Um, my mom and dad, yep, thank you. My mom and dad, blessed to have them both here tonight. Uh, my brothers, John, Dave, Brian, all my amazing teammates over the years, especially my, my friend, Steve Paletta, my former Cornell and FCA teammate. He and his wife drove down from Connecticut today. My Calvert Hall teammate, Augie Maselli, uh, and Another one, Glenn Miles, who's not here tonight. He's in California coaching in that same tournament. I think he nominated me. All the boys I've coached, I mean, Casey Capinos and all of them, um, and all who've been supported and influenced me and allowed me to help influence others. And when I consider the influence of all the other inductees tonight, these amazing stories, um, and all those inductees before us, I was looking at in the book and all these people who've gone in, all I can say with sincere humility, and I mean it with all my heart, is it's great to be here. Thank you very much. Now, as I said earlier, sometimes it's not knowing. I don't have a face to put to a name, but this time I do. 